Well, this is kind of nice. I watch this. And since I love beating a dead horse, here's another one I'm going to beat up. Kershaw and Ken Onion produced the Leek. The Leek is a very popular knife. And to be honest, there's not much I can say negative about it. But I just want to go into what makes it a good knife. In contrast, I will juxtapose it against the CRKT. Now, both of these are frame locks. You can see there, stainless steel scales. I like the shape of the blade better on the ripple. The CRK, CRKT ripple than I do the Ken Onion, but I could buy the Onion in, you know, that type of blade shape. Just didn't. Now, <clears throat> but let's get back into what makes one work and the other one not. Now, I said this was $42. This was $47. This is a Ripple 2, which makes it the smaller version. And I said it's basically this is worthless and this is a great design. But they look really similar. No. In reality, they don't. And they don't function very similar either. Let's put the CRKT to the side and let's talk about what makes the, the Ken Onion very uh, sellable. A very marketable product. One, it's flipper. Makes it cool. Assisted opening. Opens very fast. Does it have to be assisted opening? No, it wouldn't have to be. But two make the design work to have a small little flipper on the back of it that when it flips around becomes part of the handle and actually gives you some purchase there where your hand will not run up onto the blade it needed assisted opening can you do it without assisted opening yes you can but this particular design the assisted opening helps it the spring helps it because you don't have to put the input into it. The <clears throat> stainless steel scales. Well, this one has stainless steel scales too. You don't like this one, you like this one. Why? It's not the look of it. Because actually, believe it or not, I really like the looks of this knife better. This is just kind of a subdued, a subdued black knife. You know, nothing special, nothing this there or the other. But in the, in the way it works, the clip is centrally located so that in my left hand or in my right hand, it is not gouging into my hand. It will create a hot spot over time, but because of the way it's designed and its location, it fits in the pocket of my hand and it becomes part of the handle. I'll give you an example of other knives that do the same thing. Uh, you know, bench made, of course, centrally located. Spyderco Military, centrally located. Adamus, centrally located. Dale Bradley. Now I'm going to keep the Bradley out because it serves in per and it's going to be an example here in a second. Now, I like the looks of the CRKT Ripple, but I don't like its function. In the end of the day, and I really, really like this color, by the way. This uh, copper color was really cool. But, let's get back into why this knife is terrible and this knife isn't. This knife's made in the United States, this knife's made in China. Does that matter to me? Not in a least little bit when I am evaluating function of a knife. This knife has a lock on it. Because it's assisted opening, that irritates me. It's just the way it works. If I need it in a second, I'm gonna, that lock's always going to be on, okay? So there's things I don't like about both. But this knife is terrible in its design and execution the blade is probably a superior steel I'm not going to argue it I don't know enough about it and I'm not getting into the metallurgy 
is the finish on the blade, the finish on the handle and everything. You know, it's it's great, honestly. Um, the lock works good. has a big flipper. does not need the, assist the assistance. It has bearings in it. Are the bearings really a problem? In reality, for the use of this knife, no. But, and they are rubbing up against stainless steel. On some of these zero tolerances where you have bearings that are relatively small rubbing on titanium, that's an issue. Because titanium is a very, it's very malleable. It, you can bend it, move it, shape it. It takes a lot of force, but it's very flexible. Like that titanium, it's easier, honestly, to unlock this zero tolerance 550 than it is this leak. But, I digress. Why is this good and this isn't? Well, is it the placement of the lock? No. The frame lock on this knife, I hate to sit there and say it, is no different than that one. Okay? So, left-handed or right-handed, you can easily use the leak. Great design, okay? Now, try to hug the camera and get this to work. But if you noticed, in my left hand or in my right hand, if I was to place my fingers around this locking mechanism that I would create a tremendous amount of drag and I could make it to where it won't open. I mean that knife right now because of the pressure I'm putting onto it with two fingers will not I cannot get it to open but I take my hand off of it, it flicks right out. That is just something with a frame lock you have to deal with. That's the reality. It's a flipper, it's a frame lock, you know, pull up your big boy britches and move forward. That's a limitation going into it. You know, it's not like the axis lock on the 710, where this thing, buddy, you know, it doesn't matter where you have your hand, whatever, this thing or the other, or the liner lock on a Gil Bradley, okay? And this is the old one. Awesome. Now, <clears throat> and that would be the same thing on this zero tolerance. You're going to find resistance if you put, you know, this there or the other. But that's just the way it works. Here's my major problem with this knife. My major problem with this knife and why it is such a defect is the pocket clip location, design, and implementation. Both of these knives are tip down carry, which is fine. I can deal with that. In the actual use of these knives, what they were designed for, that's okay. But the Kershaw leak, because of its pocket clip being there, protecting the actual locking mechanism, and being centrally located, that makes it to where it's impossible to drag. It's almost impossible. You have to work at it to get to get your hand around and your hands basically on the, the blade at that point in time in order to create any drag. So that's one of the reasons this knife sold very well. And that pocket clip protects that there also. It's the, you know, it's kind of like one of the things of the Chris Reeves design. If you ever look at a Chris Reeves design, I don't mean to get off on all these tangents. Oops. Oh, Lord. The pocket clip actually acts to help protect the titanium lock on a Chris Reeves lock, integral lock. Yeah. Can you switch it over? No. You got a thumb stud on one side, you got that there. Because that is helping to protect the overextension of this and give better lockup without creating something that has to do have a lot of uh, 
a lot of extra hardware like this zero tolerance. This zero tolerance has a overextender here. Everything's milled out quite thin, much more thin than on the Chris Reeves. Now it also has the pocket clip and we're cool with that. But, you know, this, that, or the other. Would I recommend this knife for a left-handed person? No. Why? Because of the location of the pocket clip over on this side is way too high. It is not the same location as here. It's up here. It's down there. Why they did that, I have no idea. Because this ZT is fully skeletonized and it's about 6.1 ounces. Now, this pocket clip, not only does it set proud in relationship to the scales or the frame of this knife, because there are no scales, so it sets proud, which means it's elevated, but it's also a very sharp point of contact. So in your hand, you are right-handed. That is going to dig into your hand if you use this knife very much. And that's just the way it is. No matter how you hold it, it's there. And it's very apparent. And it is in a really bad location. Why it sets proud, I'm sure, is actually just a design... Uh, an implementation, an execution flaw, okay? But, how else are you going to do it? Well, that was a very inexpensive way of doing it. On such a, uh, I guess, a high-end CRKT, because, you know, it's stainless steel frame, ball bearings, flipper, everything else, you fell really short on the clip. How could you have easily des designed that in a different way and made it work? Go for tip-up carry. And there are plenty of executions. Everyone knows this there or the other. How to do it. Here's a deep carry pocket. This there or the other. Tip-up carry. Da -da 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 -da. Around this pivot, if you wanted to do it a different way like this paramilitary it's tip down carry not ambidextrous in any way shape form or fashion but it still centers the clip so there are ways of doing it but would it have worked you can make anything work in a design because when you're starting a design, you basically start with a blank sheet of paper. Now this knife at closeout is $47 and it's $42. This is one of the most popular knives I think probably Kershaw ever made. I don't know the exact facts. I don't this, that, or the other. This is about worthless. And how I can sit there and watch someone's videos, because I do watch other people's videos, and I didn't get my review of this off other people's videos, because most people's videos are, are just sickening nice about this knife. For such a crappy execution and crappy design, they glow and just wane prophetically about this thing. Just sit there and it's like, yeah, it's a, you know, really good one, great price, and this, there, the other, and da, 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 da. And maybe the liner lock one, which is the cheaper version, <clears throat> would be easier for me to deal with. But that clip, I hate to sit there and say it, I can work around the drag that's created by my hand on the lock and that detent ball driving into the detent on the blade. But I really, really, really can't get past how really worthless of an actual knife this is. This is like a lot of architects who design buildings and then don't know how to get them made. But watching people sit there and talk about they don't like sharp edges on knives. 
because they cut. An example of that would be, I guess, the uh, the one the Benchmade Bone Collector. A lot of people gave the Bone Collectors a bunch of scuff because they were sharp on the bottom. So I made a video, had my Dremel tool, showed people how to easily round them. Well, you don't want to breathe the fumes that are coming off. Don't want to breathe the particles that are coming off that. There's no fumes, but there are particles. And uh, and make it work. That was probably, what, four years ago, five years ago, something like that. <coughs> this knife, the Gail Bradley, all those surfaces are really uh, sharp, except for the G10. And they lowered the G10 carbon fiber composite down below the metal to give more of a, a rounding feel in the hand. One thing I don't like about this knife is it gets thinner through here. And that bulk being right here works really good in this type of grip. But as you choke up on the knife or come forward and you do a hammer grip, this, that, or the other, then that reduction in height pushes your hand forward. That's how you're mechanically getting that 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 force pushing you forward. This knife, of course, doesn't have that. Da da da. I'm just bringing that up as a side note. But one designer can make one knife that is a hit, and one knife that I don't know how in the hell it gets a good review other than on camera. It looks good, and they sell these things is beyond me. Who the hell are they selling them to? <laughs> Not anybody that really uses a knife because I can't screw the size. The bigger one's not going to be any better. I've seen it on every video where these set proud. Why do they set proud? Because there's a there's a it the frame actually rises a little bit and they they're keeping it off of that that textured <coughs> surface right there. Anyway, this is Guns, Knives, and Watches, and this is why the Leak is such a successful, or was such a successful knife, and they still sell them, and why this C CRKT is basically a mall ninja knife, or for people that don't use knives, or don't understand, or have are just going walking through the mall and saying, oh, that looks cool, I want to buy it, or on vacation, or whatever else. I mean, you saw it drag right there. And that's okay. And that's not why I'm dinging the knife. And I will ding the knife for that. And that's why this knife is so great. Because no matter how you grip it, it still works. But this one isn't. Just because of that pocket clip. Anyway, the Ken Onion Ripple from CRKT. I can't recommend to anyone. There is no hand unless your hand is super fat. If you've got, you know, you've got a big fat hand, and you can see from my hand, my hands are not small, but they're not fat by any stretch of the imagination. <clears throat> if you got a big fat hand, is that going to matter to you? No. And I guess most Americans are fat, so, <clears throat> or the majority of them are. Saw something the other day of women, the average size is a size 14. That's wild. That really is wild. Um, to think that. Because not so long ago, the average size was a six. And it's not that clothes have gotten smaller or the ratings have gone down. In fact, clothes are bigger now than they used to be. So that 14 or whatever, what size is that compared to what it was? years ago or is the 10 or 12 I don't know there's ways to look at everything there are ways to manipulate people and control people and this that or the other and this is basically one of them this is a mall ninja knife made to appeal to the lowest common denominator of the life of the knife community 
and it's a very expensive expensive example of that. $125 is full retail for these uh, Ken Onion Ripple 2's. The full size Ripple goes for $135 in, this, in these configurations. But I couldn't. I think it's a rip off at, at $47. And that's what I paid for them. And I don't know that you can easily buy them at that price. And these I no longer own, by the way. I'm making this review and since I made the last video they're going back and I've already got the money back on the card but that's just my point of view I'm gonna quit beating up this knife but this is why the Kershaw leak was so successful and some of the design elements that you need to understand when you are going and purchasing your knife and understand this is what makes something very popular is being able to you know you're not going to in any of your designs or any of this there or the other you're not going to knock it out of the park all the time but you have to be self-critical and self-analytical to understand when you do and when you don't and this is cheap chinese shit and if it was made in America, I'd call it cheap American-made shit. This one is a good design. I don't care where the hell it's made. This is Guns, Knives, and Watches. Have a good one.